Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing a luxury makeup starter kit. So you're going to see all of the essential makeup items that were key into creating this makeup look today. So if you're interested in that, then just keep watching. I'm really excited because today's video is in collaboration with Kelly Gooch. So I'm doing the luxury makeup starter kit and Kelly is actually doing the drugstore makeup starter kit, which I think is awesome that we can really complete those two spectrums within our collaboration. Now, if you don't know Kelly Gooch, she is amazing. I think I'm so drawn to her videos because she has a complete different perspective on beauty than myself. Her channel? Well, it's, it's kind of the opposite of mine. So Kelly mostly does affordable makeup brands. Of course, she does cover the higher end and luxury products as well, just like myself, but she definitely is an expert in the more affordable brands. She does cruelty-free beauty, and her focus is more on a curated collection kind of semi-minimalist, just keeping your collection small with products that you'll actually use, which, which is the complete opposite <laughs> of my channel. But I think as a beauty consumer, it is very important to take in different perspectives than yourself when deciding on what products to purchase. So I definitely trust Kelly with her opinions. You know, she's no BS, completely honest, down to earth, and I really respect her opinions on makeup products. And a lot of times she covers products that I don't cover, so I definitely go to her channel for those different products than I would buy myself. So make sure you go check out her video after this. But if you're coming from Kelly's video, hi, my name is Morgan. So on my channel, I cover all spectrum of makeup all brands. I just love reviewing products and testing them out for you guys. But I will say, my specialty is definitely in the higher end and luxury makeup brands, which is why I'm really excited to bring this video to you guys. Around this time last year, actually, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of me doing my luxury makeup starter kit back then. So I would say those items are more long-term favorites, whereas this luxury makeup starter kit, for the most part, is recent luxury necessities in my collection. There are some categories that are the same as last year's video because I feel like I hadn't come across luxury products that are comparable or better than what I said last year, but I was really excited to do this kind of revamp for 2021 because last year I tried so many good luxury products that my starter kit is different. But again, if you are looking for more options or some of the favorites that I've been using for years, check out last year's video. But all of these products, they're great regardless. So let's get into it. So as far as primer, I had to go with the Tatcha, the liquid silk canvas primer. Now this is one that I got into in the most recent year and I wasn't excited to try this because the original Tatcha Silk Canvas, which is a staple for so many, I did not like it. I didn't notice a difference. I then just took a chance and picked up the liquid version and it is amazing. I really do feel like it smooths my skin and makes makeup apply better, but because I have more dry skin, what surprised me the most is that this was actually moisturizing. A lot of times I find with poor minimizing and skin smoothing primers, they don't actually hydrate the skin. So for me, this is definitely the best of both worlds. I really do feel like it does make a difference in my makeup and it has become one of my all-time favorite primers. So this is one that I definitely think is worth the splurge for sure. As far as foundations, I love luxury foundations. I personally feel like they really are in a league of their own. Not all luxury foundations, but the really good ones, you just can't beat them at any other price point. So the ones that I have in last year's video are still my absolute favorite, but I did want to give a shout out to this new luxury favorite that I have this year. I discovered the Guerlain foundations and they are amazing, particularly the Lace and Shell. So there are two different versions, which is why I'm holding them up. They're both equally as beautiful. There's the Natural Glow Foundation and then there's the new High Perfection Foundation. As you can probably guess, the Natural Glow has more of a glowy finish to it, whereas the High Perfection is more matte. I'm currently wearing the more matte version. This is the one that I've been loving a little bit more, but they're both truly equally as great. It just depends what finish you prefer. I think I'm preferring the more matte one because I feel like it smooths out texture a little bit better, but come summertime when I want more of that glowy complexion, I am going to go for the Natural Glow. I love both of these equally, and what I love about these is you can tell they are the same base formula. They are both the L'Essential beautiful formula that this line has. They just have a little bit of different finishes. So if you like the Natural Glow foundation from Guerlain, but you're looking for something a little bit more matte, maybe you're a little bit more oily, then I would highly recommend the High Perfection. Or if you just want something more matte, you have this option. I have yet to mix these two together 
together, but I think they would make a great combination. Regardless, both of these foundations wear beautifully. Even when they wear down, your skin looks really beautiful and perfected. And overall, the skin looks very smooth with the product applied. And these have really crept up to become some of my favorite foundations ever so I had to mention those. As far as eyebrow products I'm not gonna lie I don't think you should splurge on a luxury eyebrow product. I think high-end and drugstore both do a great job in that category to the point where it's not really worth it. I will say if you are dying to have a luxury eyebrow product I really like the Marc Jacobs Brow Wow Duo. This was in my favorites for 2020 because it is really amazing but I don't think it's anything spectacular that you need to splurge on. You know, I like Esam, ABH, NYX, ColourPop. I think they all have great products, so I don't think you need this. But I really do like this product because it has a pencil side, which blends really easily, doesn't apply too much color. And I particularly love the eyebrow gel in here. I feel like it really does stick my hairs down. So if you want a luxury product, I recommend this, but it's definitely not a necessary splurge. Concealers. Now concealers are going to be the exact same as last year's because truly I have not found any concealers that are better than these two or that are even comparable. If I'm being completely honest, the first one is the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Concealer. This is my favorite everyday concealer. The way that it applies is just so effortless. I feel like as soon as I put on my sponge to blend this product out, it just blends so seamlessly into the skin. It gives the perfect medium coverage to the eye. It wears really well. It doesn't overly crease and it just makes the under eyes look quite smooth and for me what's most important is how easy it blends out and into the skin and how good it wears so highly recommend this one people stopped talking about this one a while ago but I'm still loving it it's still one of my favorites now if you've watched my channel I tell you all the time this is my favorite concealer Pat McGrath Labs also has my all-time favorite concealer this one's more high coverage and more thick than your Giorgio Armani so if I need more coverage this is what I go to for it being so thick it doesn't get too crepey or creasy underneath the eyes. It's perfect. It's so multifunctional because I love how it looks as a spot concealer. I love how it looks under eye. Sometimes I'll blend it all over to even out my entire complexion. It's just my all-time favorite concealer. But again, if you're looking for something a little bit more light, a little bit more wearable, the Giorgio Armani is my favorite. As far as powder, I also had to talk about the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Finish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. These are a amazing. The only caveat to these is they break so easily. I think I've had to buy like three of the same color because as soon as I take them to travel, they just, they explode. It's the weirdest thing. So I don't take these to travel with me, but they're so good that I just continue buying them. So I like to use the light translucent shade underneath my eyes. I've never come across a more blurring powder, you guys. This just blurs right over any holes or crevices or creases you have on your face and makes it look smooth. So then I loved it so much that I had to try it in the shade medium. So I now use this all over my face. The only sad part is you don't get a ton of product because it is made as an under eye powder, but seriously, it's worth it to use it as an all over powder. Because we're speaking about luxury products, I will say the most disappointing part about it, of course, besides it exploding, is the packaging. This is... It's so cheap. You can see this lettering's already coming off. It's plastic. That's a bit disappointing to me, but because I feel like part of buying luxury is you're also buying for the packaging, and I mean, the product is totally worth it. Don't get me wrong, but the packaging is, the packaging is cheap, but the product itself is so great. So if you are looking for a blurring powder, something so extremely smoothing, you gotta try the Pat McGrath. Okay, let's talk about bronzer next. There were a few that I was toggling between. I think Tom Ford has a really great bronzer. Mark Jacobs does it really good, but I think universally my favorite has to be the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. I'm stuck because there are a lot of luxury bronzers that I enjoy and I was really thinking about the Gucci as well, but the Gucci has weird undertones, honestly. So I feel like this is what most people will love, which is why I recommend it as a starter color because the undertones in the Charlotte Tilbury are perfect. The Gucci, some is too pink, some is too red. This one has the perfect undertones in every single shade that they have in my personal opinion. This is the shade medium. The light is also really nice for fair complexions and I feel like the light would also look really good on my skin tone as well. They have quite a deep range as well and the formula itself is beautiful. You get so much product so I think this is the best bang for your buck and I think universally this is going to look the best on everybody. So a nice big fat luxury bronzer that applies beautifully and looks perfect 
is the Charlotte Tilbury. As far as blush, I'm iffy about sharing these with you just because I do think they are so expensive for the amount of product that you are getting. But they really are truly a luxurious formula, so I had to put them in this video. So if you're looking for a true luxury blush, you have to go with Shantikai. I only have two shades, and I'm keeping it only at two shades because they are so pricey, but it is worth picking up one or two. So I have the shade Bliss, which is the butterfly, and the shade Emotion, which is the B. They're even more beautiful when you get them because they do have a golden overspray over the animals, and it makes it that much better of an experience. I do wish that was within the product, not as opposed to just on top. Oh, but these are so pretty. They give the most natural flush. It's really hard to over apply the blush and they give kind of a glowiness to your skin that's very youthful and I just think that the way they apply is worth the experience because it's just so easy it blends into the skin so beautifully and they have a lot of colors to choose from that I think are really beautiful I'm currently wearing the shade bliss which is not going to be for everybody but it does show up more on the skin than you think it would in the pan it just gives you a very nice natural pink flush that goes with any look of course I don't recommend this color if you have a medium to deep complexion but if you have a more light skin tone this is beautiful beautiful and if you like coral this is going to be a little bit more universal as far as how many skin tones it's going to work on emotion which is the b is the most beautiful coral pink color highlight i have I, I i couldn't do a video without talking about this charlotte tilbury highlighter it's the most amazing my all-time favorite highlighter this is the hollywood superstar glow highlighter i believe this is limited edition so if you want it you gotta go get it and the reason why i put this in my starter kit is because it works on so many different skin tones i've seen it on pretty deep skin tones and it still looks like everything <laughs> and on lighter skin tones as well it works and the reason why it's so beautiful is just because of the way that it blends into the skin and the way that it works with your skin there is no lines of demarcation of where the highlight starts and finishes and where you applied it it just looks like it is a part of your skin and it doesn't leave any sort of cast at least on my skin tone it's just when you turn your face you see the beautiful glow and sometimes I think that the camera has a hard time picking that up but truly all-time favorite highlighter and a lot of great luxury highlighters have come out this year the Dior quads are beautiful the Natasha Denona I need a nude let's see Pat McGrath also just came out with the most gorgeous highlight formula ever but the Charlotte Tilbury I just think is the most universal color that's going to look beautiful, great for every day with multiple looks. The last cheek product that I wanted to share with you, I had to, is the Wang Goss, the Weightless Veil Blush Palette, particularly in the shade Coral Rose. Now he has a few other shades, but this one just, the others don't match up to this one, I'm not gonna lie. The blush is really pretty, and the highlight really just makes this product so amazing. The highlight has so much coverage, but it smooths out the skin. It's very rare to come across a highlight, because it is a highlight, that actually kind of smooths the skin, but this one does and the blush is a very pretty everyday blush but the highlighter is what makes this palette and listen this is sold out and if you missed it it's because you don't have your notifications on because I put out a community post telling you that this was finally back in stock and you guys didn't put on your notifications so you missed it but this is the best you need to get it and it's pricey but you get so much product and I feel like these are just great everyday universal colors and the formula is unbeatable okay let's move on to eyeshadows now there are two that I'm recommending but you're gonna pick one based on the color story that you prefer so I mean you you guys can pretty much guess it's gonna be a Natasha Denona now. Luxury eyeshadows, Pat McGrath, you guys know, is special to me. I also really like Charlotte Tilbury and Busy Art and among other brands, but I think if you're starting out, Natasha Denona is the way to go just because of the value and the different variations and formula that she has in her palettes. I just think overall, as much as I love my Pat McGrath, sometimes it can be a bit much, you know? And there's something about Natasha Denona's formula that I think is a bit more approachable to somebody starting off in the luxury side of makeup. Up. Here's the two that you should start off with. Take your pick. If it's up to me, if you're asking me, I'm gonna recommend the Glam Palette to you. Now these styles of palettes are great because they have a smaller amount of product than some of the other Natasha Denona types of palettes, but it is 
literally half the price. So her normal palettes have twice the amount of product and they're twice the price. This is a really great value for what you're getting and you get a taste of different formulas and a lot of different colors. Now I'm all for the cool tone neutrals which is why this is more towards my taste and my color palette. This is the palette that I'm wearing now. If you like these everyday smoky looks, this is the palette that you need to get. So yeah, I love it. The formulas in here are incredible. But let's say you like more warmer tones because not everybody's going to like cool tones especially, you know, blue eyes look really great with warm tones, then maybe go towards the bronze palette. It's the same style, same price, same great quality, just a little bit more warm. The kind of thing that I don't like about this is I feel like every look that you do looks the same, but if you like that bronzy warm look, then you're going to love this palette. So if you're starting off with luxury makeup, you definitely need to dive into one of these two. They're truly the best just based on your taste of color. But like I said, I recommend the glam, but you do you. You will love either palette that you get regardless. Listen, I wear a lot of warm looks, but nothing makes me feel prettier than a more cool tone look, but I use this palette a ton, so it's still fantastic. As far as eyeliners, I think liquid liners, I tend to use high-end liquid liners, not necessarily luxury, just because they go so fast, but I had to talk about the Wayne Goss Obsidian Eye Cool Pencil. I really like the Marc Jacobs uh, and the Urban Decays, but the Wayne Goss is so good. It blew my mind this year. I'm wearing it today. If you're looking for an eye pencil to give you the most perfect smoky liner, but also that's going to wear a long time after it's set, it has to be this pencil. It is so, so, so black, but it's so easy to blend out. So you'll see in my demo, I lined my eyes and then I just took a brush and I blended everything out and it gave the most beautiful smoky effect to the eye without being too deep and obnoxious. So this blends out beautifully. It wears beautifully. And you know, I'm considering it luxury because I consider Wayne Goss to be a luxury brand, but the price on these is really good. They're like $14, which is not much more than a drugstore pencil pencil. So if you're looking for a good eye cool pencil, look into Wayne Goss. They're amazing. I know he has other colors. I've heard good and bad things about the other colors, but I can speak for the obsidian, the black, and it's amazing. Mascara. Okay, mine is disgusting and I need to throw it out. This is its last time of being used today, but this is the Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes Mascara. Now, I don't think this is for everybody, but this is for my girls that have like no eyelashes because I'm not gonna lie, this flakes. I do have mascara flakes on my eyes at the end of the day, but the way that it makes my lashes look is so worth it. So I have very short, sparse lower and upper lashes, but I like this particularly on my lower lashes because nothing builds up my lower lashes quite like this mascara. So if I'm doing a look where I'm not wearing false lashes, this is the mascara that I'm going to go to. If you have very naturally nice lashes, I wouldn't use this because it does flake all over your face. But if you're hopeless and no mascara works for you or makes your lashes look good, give this a little bit of time to dry out. So use it a few times before you truly judge it. But the way that this mascara builds after, you know, a few uses, it's incredible. So it's my favorite. I did feature this in last year's luxury starter kit as well but it's, it's it's very rare that I like a mascara and I like that okay so now it's time to move on to the final category of lips as far as pencils not much has changed I talked about Pat McGrath lip liners last year they're unbeautiful as far as creaminess ease of application and how it sets and lasts you can't be Pat McGrath. You just can't. My favorite color is the color that I'm wearing right now. We have contour. I like contour because it's the perfect true shade to actually contour with. So how I apply it is it applies so creamy and you have a few seconds to blend it. So when I use this shade, I like to apply it just around my lips, a little bit on the outer parts, and then I'll use my finger to blend because it creates a true shadow. It's just that perfect color and it goes with any kind of beigey nude, which is kind of my lip look. So that's my favorite, but if you're looking for something a little bit more Pinky. I really like Bare Rose, which let me show you. This is what Bare Rose looks like. And then Done Undone is kind of like a my lip color. So you can see it's a little bit more neutral brown if you're looking for something more neutral. So those are my top three most used colors. I did also want to give a special shout out to Charlotte Tilbury lip liners. They're really, really great. Just about as good as Pat McGrath. I prefer Pat McGrath just a little bit more because I feel like it's a little bit more long wearing, but Charlotte Tilbury's colors are fantastic. I use the colors that she has all the time that I don't even know where they all went. In my hand right now, I only have Super Size Me, which looks like this. And this is my perfect shade that I love to use to make my lips look more plump while still having a very natural lip color. But I also love Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk 2 is really great. So 
Charlotte Tilbury also is a great one to look into as far as pretty natural lip colors that are really great for you to shape and resize your lips. Lipsticks, okay. I had to talk about Natasha Denona lipsticks because they really are my favorite. They're the most creamy. I talked about Charlotte Tilbury last year. I still love her line equally as much, but I didn't talk about Natasha Denona last year and I need to give them love. I love her color range. I feel like a lot of the colors though do look very similar, so just be careful about that. You'll see in my arm swatches here that I have a type, okay? And the fact that all of those are in the same range, just be wary of the colors that you get, but I did wanna share with you some of my favorite colors. She has the best nude range. If you like more brownie kind of nudes, the best. And it's the most creamy lipstick I've ever dealt with. Almost a little bit too creamy. I'm not gonna lie, if you live in a hot climate, don't keep these in your car, don't keep these in your purse because it'll be a hot mess. But living in the cold temperatures of Maryland currently, that's not an issue, but they're so comfy on the lips. So my most used shade, is probably Natasha and look what happens when it's in too hot of a climate. It's it's a mess. It's about to fall out. I need to melt these into a pot but it is the perfect neutral shade for any cool toned deep smoky eye. Mutes out the lips while still giving your lips definition. It's so beautiful. If I'm looking for something a little bit more deep but still I love her cool toned options. The shade Noah right here. Beautiful light brown nude. I think it'll be gorgeous on medium to deep skin tones as well. I'm currently wearing the shade Maria. This came out in her bronze collection. And you'll see this is like a light peach, just like that. Um, it's beautiful with that contour lip color. Just a really great nude peach color. And then one of my favorites, this recently restocked. And if you like to do purpley pinky kind of eye looks, you need this color. This came out in her new mini love collection. And this is the shade Amorosa. And it was sold out for a bit because it's literally a beautiful color. And it just came back into stock. And it's a perfect kind of rose nude shade that has a little bit of neutral tones in there. That makes it really great for more cool toned looks. And yeah, run and get this is beautiful. Normally, I don't get too excited about her lipsticks with collections because I'm so focused on the palette that comes out or whatever it is but this was the first time where I was like no I need that lipstick that is just as important to get as the eyeshadow palette and I highly recommend you pick it up if you wear those kinds of tones on your eye. Okay final product is lip gloss. I still stand by Pat McGrath lip glosses. I think she literally has the best lip gloss formula ever but I did want to give a special shout out to Dior lip maximizers. So I'm weird. I like the feeling of that little bit of a cooler sensation that's going to plump your lips and I think these are just so comfortable and so wearable. They are quite sheer but they give the prettiest gloss to your lips and it's so comfortable and again I like that little tingle that it gives. I currently have the shade number 16 and this is a product that I want more colors of. I just can't justify buying lip glosses leisurely right now. Like I'll buy a lip gloss if I'm reviewing it but just for me to have it doesn't make sense right now because <laughs> wearing a lip gloss with a mask Mm -mm, I ain't doing it. So definitely if the world changes and I can start wearing lip glosses again, I want to pick up more of these formulas because I think it is so beautiful. There's no stickiness to it. It's very lightweight and thin on the lips, but it still gives a lot of gloss and it's very comfortable. That's a formula that I haven't talked about too much, but I had to give it some love. All right, you guys, there we have it. Those are all of the products in my luxury makeup starter kit. Make sure you head over to Kelly's channel to see what is in her drugstore starter kit and we got you covered, girl. We do. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, do it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one. All right, quickly I wanna go over the look that I was wearing in today's video. So we're starting off with the blend shade and I'm going to use that as my all over transition color. Please make sure that you blend it nice and evenly. I took my sweet time with this step. Then I'm going into smoke and we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna add some definition and kind of make this look a little bit more smoky. Now I'm going in with the outer eyelid shade and I'm putting this all over the lid. It looks deeper in the pan, but it actually pulls very light and smoky all over the eye. Make sure you blend the two textures together. Now we're going in with this inner corner shade and I'm just putting that right in the inner corner to brighten things up. Then using this lash line shade, I'm just smoking everything out even more. And that's how you get this look.